it turns out there are two different types of well-being. One is this uh, daily experience where, in order to gauge that, researchers ask you, what were you doing at 2 o'clock yesterday? Who were you with? How much did you enjoy it? What were you doing at 3.15? Who are you with? How much did you enjoy it? It's that moment to moment, are you really having a good day and enjoying things? That's one type of well-being. i share that with you before I get into any of the content here. When I was about 15 years old, I was outside playing basketball with some friends, and I noticed there was a big black spot in, the, in my left eye, in my left visual field. I wasn't quite sure what it was. Eventually, I decided I needed to go to an eye doctor. That eye doctor told me that I, had a, I might have a very rare genetic disorder that had caused cancer on the back of that eye. And after several tests and surgeries, he, he told, as he predicted, I lost all sight in that eye permanently and I'm blind from this side on. Um, he said that wasn't the worst of the news, though. He said that we need to check and see if you have this rare genetic mutation that essentially shuts off the body's most powerful tumor suppressor and causes cancer to grow kind of rampantly throughout the body. And so we went ahead and did the gen genetic testing, and it turned out I had a one in four million uh, de novo mutation of this rare disorder that makes it almost certain that I would have cancer in my kidneys and pancreas and spine and adrenal glands and a host of major areas. And uh, sure enough, to make a real long story kind of short, over the last 20 plus years, I have battled and I'm currently battling cancer in my pancreas and my kidneys. And uh, I go in every 6, 12 months and have MRIs and CT scans and most recently in my spine. And so. I bring that up because I faced a series of major health challenges, but when I look back at how that affected my life at that point when I was just kind of finishing up high school and entering into college, what it did was it got me very focused on what are the little things that I can do to make a difference today that will contribute to something long after I'm gone. And so that's what I'd like to spend most of my time on today is talking about then the degree to which focusing on strengths makes a difference is what surprised me the most. What we learned is that if you have someone, a mentor, a parent, a teacher, a manager, who's focusing on your strengths regularly, the odds of being really disengaged in what you're doing should go all the way down to 1 in 100. As part of one experiment we conducted, we asked healthcare workers to wear around a little Palm Pilot device, or little handheld devices, so a few years ago. They wore little chest heart rate monitors. And every time we asked them, what are you doing at 215? Who are you with? And some other questions. We asked them to spit into a tube so we could see if, when they said they were stressed, it matched their uh, physiological measure of the stress hormone cortisol. One thing we learned is that was a big waste of money, because when people say they're stressed, they are. So the, the next time <laughs> the next, in our drawer, we drive around. Uh, for 10 minutes in the Target parking lot so we don't have to walk an extra 100 steps. <laughs> and it's, it's a problem from an activity standpoint because the more scientists study this topic, it's clear that even if you work out 30 minutes a day or 60 minutes a day, five, six days a week, that will not counteract sitting on your rear end for eight or 10 hours. When I first started tracking this using one of those little Fitbit devices maybe four or five years ago, I thought I was pretty active and healthy, and I found out that I was sitting at least nine hours a day on average. And so I, I think we're at a point.